Hey, BC. Uh, Jeff, back again. Um, looks like work day might be ending a little early today, so just going to shoot a quick one before it gets noisy around here. Um, hope you guys are enjoying your uh, holiday weekend. So just jumping right in. Um, lots of new stuff in here, so I'm just in lots of uh, pretty solid uh, revisits. Okay, so this one is Brave Young, Misery and Pride. Um, this would be considered like a mini LP. Uh, or maybe it's an LP, it's a shorter LP. Um, kind of uh, enjoyable, kind of droney, ambient kind of music. Um, pretty, pretty damn solid, uh, four and a half ish, maybe a little higher. Um, some pretty uh, solid, uh, Albi <laughs> heavily Albini uh, influenced um, noise rock out of Germany. Uh, trigger cuts. So, yeah, um, a, I think there's a few of these floating around the States still, from a couple of years ago, I believe. But, um, I don't know what the title I think it's just, uh, Rogo? Rogo is the title? Huh? Yeah, Rogo is the title. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty uh, interesting one if you like, um, you know, your big blacks and so on. Um, <laughs> I revisited this guy, still highly recommended. Um, anti Antelope, or was it like Pink Dolphins? Yeah, Pink Dolphins is the name. Uh, I believe this was the last um, release by what's her name, uh, Jamie Branch. So that kind of Chicago, UK, jazz, um, whatever's. Um, kind of early example of uh, Japanese punk. Punk. <laughs> uh, just warnings, I know. Uh, um, Final Rich bought some of this stuff thinking it was actually going to be punk punk. Um, even though, yeah, very punk attitude, but it's definitely more on the avant-garde, experimental, uh, poppy stuff. Because, you know, basically the early first uh, wave of Japanese punk didn't know what their, uh, what punk was supposed to sound like, basically. So it sounds kind of like new wave before new wave was a thing. Anyway, um, on band. Uh, numbers went on to form some other stuff. It was a bit harder, but um, yeah, it might be worth a, a stream at the very least. Not definitely not for everyone. Um, Laurie Anderson fans and so on would probably enjoy it. Uh, not my favorite Bowie, but it's I love the. Um, I guess they're not exactly covers because he wrote them, but those uh, he, has, he does uh, several of um, the Iggy Pop tracks that he wrote uh, or co-wrote on this one, but uh, it's a little uneven overall, it's still kind of fun. Uh, just, just got it in the mood, so threw it on. Not as good as Led Zeppelin 1 for sure, but sorry. Um, thought this was going to get a purge, but it didn't. Uh, Self-titled, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Um, yeah, Prague will freak out uh, yes, I don't know why I was listening to some of this crap. Uh, Ramsey Lewis, Goddess, it shows up everyone's on the DC. It's a fun album, um, in the soul jazz vein. Dirty Boots, excellent uh, EP with a lot of live tracks from that uh, that era. Highly recommend that if you see it. Uh, don't pay a lot for it though. Uh, one Spot Fringe Head, back with Butch. Which side is better? Okay, um, so, DC area, hardcore, kind of on the edge of uh, noise rock. Um, let's see, so I gotta add this to Discogs, uh, so kind of a, um, yeah, so basically classical music using traditional Chinese uh, instruments purchased in Japan, Japanese pressing, not in Discogs. I just gotta get off my ass and just, I guess I'm gonna just have to use a camera and cut and paste, because that's, that's gonna be a bitch to copy. <laughs> uh, John Coltrane, another Japan purchase uh, with Ferro Sanders. This one's a little out there, but excellent. Um, so Ameri it's a uh, U.S. pressing, but it's a Japanese release. So it's got like the Jap uh, missing OB, but it's got the uh, Japanese insert. Again, I got to add it to Discogs. That's why I'm just kind of sitting to the side. Uh, classic album. Don't need to talk too much about it. That's uh, the kind of best of. Pretty much the only one I need. Kind of um, kind of see clean that up and see if I want to keep that one or keep the. Uh, I got like a CD copy, it's got some extra stuff on it. Uh, this is a great one. Um, Midori, uh, Takada with, uh, there's a, um, who's French or French Canadian? La Fonda? Um, so it's a one sided um, 
this EP with an etching on side. Got this from Sean's uh, sale. If you haven't already, check out Sean's sale. Um, you also got a contest running on until this weekend. Um, yeah, it's it, um, neoclassical, I guess. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting. It's a good one. Um, four and a half there. Uh, revisited this one, Romeo Void, um, Benefactor, pretty solid, and that um, kind of early new wave uh, post punk. Uh, excellent album, Where Did Love Go? Let me talk about that one. Unwound uh, EP. Uh, this is, he was called uh, The Light at the End of the Tunnel of the Train. Otherwise, the only place you can get the tracks on this, I think, are the Unwound box set. So pretty good from uh, their, uh, when they're at their prime. Um, K. Salvador, uh, the Zahar. Uh, not their best, not their worst. Um, but um, kind of that kind of drony experimental. Um, I liked it. It's a pretty solid four. Uh, another strong purchase. I've been wanting that one. Um, I think this one's getting purged. So Anne Lewis, uh, Japanese uh, J-pop star. This one leans a little. You know, if you like Pink Lady, you got to remember that from the uh, late seventies or eighties. If you're in the states, uh, leans in that um, direction. So kind of soul based J-pop. Uh, I think she was like. The daughter of like a serviceman, Japanese uh, woman, obviously. Uh, this is a um, ugly head um, out of Richmond. Uh, noise rock. It was really good. Uh, seven inch there. Oddly, uh, does not say ugly head on the cover, which is probably why they didn't sell too many. And then uh, jump into some CDs, and I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, Confusion is sex. One of my favorite Sonic Youth albums. Uh, definitely at their harshest. Uh, Zenigeva, um, this one's Trans Europe Experience. I believe this is all studio. It's a little cleaner than I'm used to. I kind of like the rougher sound, but um, it, it's a it's a pretty solid album. Not their not their best though. The, another a lot of these are Sean purchases. Um, Helen Money. This is Arriving Angels. This might be the one that um, Steve showed. I'm not sure. Uh, again, not her best, but still pretty good. Uh, even though it's like pseudo experimental classical based, it's yeah, I'll run through a lot of heavy distortions that ends up sounding kind of almost um, noise rocky. Uh, in the same vein, um, Splintered, the Judas Cradle. Um, I forget, I think Splintered, yeah, Splintered is the band, okay. And then, um, yeah, so it's again uh, kind of noise rock by way of industrial. This is a really good album, actually. Um, highly recommend that one. Four and a half. Uh, really good uh, outing by Earth. Again, Sean Purchase. Four and a half all day long. Um, really good um, Cop Shoot Cop album. Again, um, four and a half ish. I'd say it's one of their better albums. Um, kind of again, noise rocky, heavier on the heavier punk. Um, yeah, four and a half ish, and then uh, helmets. Betty, they went a little bit different direction on this one, but still quite solid. Uh, pretty, pretty four. Not, I like their earlier albums a little more, but that, yeah, some people seem to like that one more. Uh, this is Les Rosales de Nudes, heavier than Death and Family. Um, again, boot, but um, it's a very common boot. Uh, one of their better outings, um, top five for sure. So if you're interested, uh, you can still pick these up on, they show up on vinyl every once in a while, but honestly, the CD sounds as good, if not better. Um, so, look into that. Uh, it is a boot. Um, there is a new one, but I'm not, yeah. And Solar Drifting um, by um, Expo 70, again, kind of drony, fun, um, fun album. And then, very uh, kind of, this, this one's kind of interesting because it's, it's kind of the um, transition several of the musicians from um, I don't know if you want to call them Circle Triangle Square or in English or go by the, or was it um, Maru Sankaku Shikoku so yeah in Japanese um, so they were kind of a experimental outfit um, you know kind of that Yoko Ono <laughs> kind of vein um, very experimental performances uh, yeah like um, Harry Parsh, uh, the, you know, or uh, J um, not John Kill, um, John, um, not, not John Zorn. Oh, God. What do you think? Uh, 
Oh, friggin' hell. Okay. But anyway, the, the ones that exo the guy, do the exotic youth and all those guys, uh, there's no way of guys left. Um, anyway, uh, so they started that, then they moved into this, which is a little more blues rocky, um, proto punky, but a very blues based, and then um, they became uh, the punk band Fraction, which is very much punk. Um, but yeah, and this, this is a kind of an interesting one I got from Sean. Um, I was going to buy this in Japan. I'm glad I got the Sean's copy because it includes a um, extra disc. Not that it's like a great disc, but um, it has like, it's, I think they call it proto friction or something or pre fiction. Um, friction? Friction, not fiction. Um, yeah, it has like some earlier versions of their songs before they went full punk. Um, so it's kind of interesting release just for that. But it's that the band that kind of between the two. Um, but a very, very blues based despite uh, the direction they went. Anyway, um, I'm just going to call it there and hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and lots of barbecue, etc. I am out of here. Keep it nice and short.